Satguru is a realized yogi and mystic who works tirelessly towards the physical, mental, and spiritual well-being of all. With the unique ability to make the ancient yogic sciences relevant to contemporary minds, Sadhguru acts as a bridge to the deeper dimensions of life. His approach does not ascribe to any belief system, but offers methods for self-transformation that are both proven and powerful. Satguru's transformational programs have deeply touched the lives of millions worldwide. A prolific author, poet, and internationally renowned speaker, his wit and piercing logic provoke and broaden our thoughts and perception of life. Named one of India's 50 most influential people, Sadhguru has been a leading voice at major global forums, including the United Nations, World Economic Forum, the UK House of Lords, TED, and the top business schools and universities around the world. Sadhguru established Isha Foundation, a non-profit organization supported by over 3 million volunteers worldwide. From powerful yoga programs to large-scale humanitarian projects for rural upliftment, education for the underprivileged, environmental restoration, as well as holistic and healthy living. The Foundation's activities are designed to create an inclusive culture and establish global harmony. A little over fifteen thousand years ago, in the upper regions of Himalayas, a yogi appeared. Nobody knew where he came from, his antecedents were unknown, but he looked extraordinary, so people gathered. They waited, they thought he's going to perform some miracle but he did nothing, simply he sat, unmoving. People left, only seven people hung on. These seven people recognized that this is a fantastic miracle because only someone who has transcended the physical nature can simply sit. Then they begged him, you seem to be knowing or experiencing something that we cannot imagine. Please teach us. Then he gave them some few simple preparatory methods and said, you prepare yourself, let me see. They went on preparing themselves. Months went into years, years went into decades, eighty-four years passed. One day, when the shift of solstice happened, the sun's relationship with the planet changes. When these changes happen, every yogi makes some adjustment within himself because something about your body changes at that time. So when he was making this, he just looked. These seven people had become shining receptacles, eighty-four years. He had completely forgotten about them. Here they were, still preparing. 
then, because nobody knew his name, he never introduced himself, they called him Adi Yogi. Adi Yogi means the first yogi. Now, because the sun turned south, he also faced south and sat down. So they called him the Adi Guru. The first guru was born. This was considered the most significant day because it's in this day humanity was first reminded the simple laws of nature are not permanent restrictions. If you're willing to strive, you can go beyond that. And he not only gave this idea, he gave methods as to how to get there. And when all the seven people attained, he told them to go away to faraway lands. So one he sent to Central Asia, another he sent to North Africa, another he sent to South America, another he sent to Far East Asia, another stayed back with him, another came down to what is called as the present Indian Himalayas, another he sent him down to South India, he is very important for us, that is Agastya Muni, who is known as the father of Southern mysticism. Agastya Muni came down south, south of India. Every human habitation in this part of the world, he made sure spiritual process became a natural way of living. So these seven sages took this different dimensions of yoga and even today you can see the remnants of what they did thousands of years ago present in every culture across the planet. The word yoga means union. Union means right now, it is a scientific fact today that this existence is just one energy manifesting in many different ways. When Einstein says E is equal to mc squared, he's talking about it is all the same energy manifesting in millions of different ways. Or experientially, if you look at it, what you exhale right now, the trees are inhaling. What they exhale, we are inhaling. What this means is, one half of the lung is hanging out there. Yes, one half of your lungs is hanging out there, isn't it? The whole breathing mechanism is not here. Only one part is here, another part is out there. If we experientially knew this, nobody had to tell us to save the environment, don't cut the tree, <laughs> all this would be rubbish for us if we only experience this. So, it is common knowledge, at least in your high school textbook, that you are not a, some kind of a freak happening. You are just a part of the universe, you are also just one more happening and it's a part of everything else. So union means in your experience, you, if you sit here, there's only you. The whole existence is just you. So you are capable of experiencing something that is not you as yourself, if only a certain level of inclusiveness happens within you. Your inclusiveness right now is limited to your physicality. If this inclusiveness can be extended beyond physical nature, suddenly you can sit here experience the whole universe as yourself. If this happens to you, then we say you are in yoga. So why the physical posture came is, uh, maybe many of you are not old enough for this, but if you saw the televisions in seventies, when it first came, you had that little aluminum contraption over your home. You remember that? Antenna? You were watching like this, suddenly your television boop, 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 boop. <laughs> then somebody went up on the terrace and <laughs> now, gently like this. Get into the right place, once again the world pours into your sitting room. Yes or no? Just if you get into the right place, this is just like that. If you learn to just hold this body right, if you know how to hold it right, you can download the whole cosmos into this. This is Hatha Yoga.
yoga is not twisting and turning, you can change the fundamentals of who you are. You don't have to do anything on the yoga mat. Without that, you can transform the fundamentals by doing… making your life into yoga. One way of looking at yoga is, one meaning of yoga is, that which renders you to a higher possibility in your life is yoga. So, it is best that people approach this in a different way. So, my approach to this is that we must bring the awareness of the profound possibility of yoga. Yoga is a much subtler dimension. It needs to be handled in an extremely committed atmosphere and you have to be precise in the way you approach it. Otherwise, what can fundamentally transform your life if it's mishandled, it can do certain things. It's like we can't think of living without electricity right now. It's making our lives in every way. So you love it so much, you go and stick your little finger into that hole in the wall, then it does something else. So anything that is capable of transforming our lives, we must understand if something has the power to transform, it has the power to cause damage if mishandled. So instead of trying yoga, I would say if somebody wants to rapidly learn something, there is a dimension of yoga which is called as upa-yoga. That means it's pre-yoga or sub-yoga. The word upa-yoga in vernacular languages in India has come to mean something useful now, but actually it means, upa-yoga means sub-yoga or pre-yoga. So this pre-yoga, we are seeing how to make it popular. You are not looking for any spiritual possibility, you just want to physically be little better, mentally little limbered up and this. For this we have a simple schedule of upa yoga, you can learn this in three minutes yoga you want to do, you can do. You want to do six minutes yoga, you can do. This is all upa yoga, this is not yoga. So probably this is something that large segments of the world, even those people who are involved in yoga are not aware that there is another possibility of doing semi-yoga something that gives you physical and psychological benefits but doesn't touch the spiritual dimension as yet. After you feel physically, mentally well and you still see life is not fulfilled, then you can seek the spiritual process. So, one dimension of what we want to do for this thing is to make Upa Yoga popular because this can be taught, this can be taught on the street, this can be taught anywhere and you can practice it anywhere, in any posture, whichever way and the benefits will be quite immense. But it will not demand the level of commitment that yoga demands, nor does it cause any problem if you do it improperly, because you can't do it improperly. We will be learning seven sets of Upa Yoga practices. Yoga for health, success, peace, well-being, joy, inner exploration and love. Now we will be learning Upa Yoga step by step. Here are a few guidelines that will set optimal conditions and greatly enhance your receptivity of the practices. Dedicate the next one hour exclusively for this purpose. Please ensure cell phones are either in silent mode or switched off. It is also best to avoid getting up, eating, drinking, or going to the restroom in between. It is advisable not to sit for the program with a full stomach or immediately after a meal. Somewhat hungry, light stomach or empty stomach is optimal. Please sit with your spine comfortably erect, hands uncrossed and palms open. These conditions will prepare you to be in a heightened state of receptivity and derive the most benefits from the practices. These practices are very safe and simple and can be done by anybody. People with chronic diseases, pain, cardiovascular problems consult a doctor before doing these practices and exercise precaution. Make sure to do everything slowly and gently and according to the instructions. If you are uncomfortable doing any particular practice, you can skip that one and do the next practice you are comfortable attempting. If you're feeling any pain or discomfort, stop and consult a doctor. The practices we will be learning here can be done by anyone ages 7 years and above. 
If you are wearing glasses while doing the yoga practices, please remove them and keep them aside. Certain practices require you to close your eyes. When you do these practices, you can observe the demonstration if needed. When you are comfortable, you can close your eyes. Yoga for health, directional movement. When you lie in horizontal postures for a few hours during sleep, the lubricating fluids in your joints tend to settle down and are not in circulation. So when you wake up, body is demanding, you first lubricate your joints. Directional movement is a simple way of doing this. It also exercises the muscles without any risk of injury. Joints have a concentration of energy nodules, so by activating them, everything in the system gets ignited for action. Now we will learn the first part of Upa Yoga. This is called directional movement of the arms. We will be doing this practice in four different directions. We will see the demonstration of the first direction. Please observe. How you do this is, stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Eyes closed. As you inhale, bring your hands just in front of your shoulders. This is the starting position. The first direction is sideways. As you exhale, extend your arm sideways. The wrists should rotate with outward movement. Once your arms are fully extended, as you inhale, bring them inward. Now your wrists should rotate with inward movement. This is one cycle. You do this three times. This is not only about rotating the wrists but your hands should also open and close with the rotation. All the muscles are tense, like you're pushing something, like a screwdriver. Create maximum tension you can in your arms, without creating tension in the rest of the body. When your arms are going out, it is always outward rotation of the wrists with an exhalation. When your arms are coming in, it is always inward rotation of the wrists with an inhalation. Now we will do three cycles together. Please stand. Make sure you have sufficient space around you. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Eyes closed. As you inhale, bring your hands just in front of your shoulders. This is the starting position. As you exhale, extend your arms sideways. The wrists should rotate with outward movement. Once your arms are fully extended, as you inhale, bring them inward. Now your wrists should rotate with inward movement. This is one cycle. We will do this twice more. Second cycle. This is not only about rotating the wrists, but your hands should also open and close with the rotation. Create maximum tension you can in your arms, without creating tension in the rest of the body. Third cycle. When your arms are going out, it is always outward rotation of the wrists with an exhalation. When your arms are coming in, 
it is always inward rotation of the wrists with an inhalation. When you're finished, please relax. You can sit comfortably. Now we will look at a few common corrections to keep in mind while you do the practice. As a clarification, when your arms are going out, it is always outward rotation of the wrists. This is outward rotation. You can try it and see. When your arms are coming in, it is always inward rotation of the wrists. This is inward rotation. Do not do it fast or casually with little tension. Do it slowly, creating as much tension as you can in your arms, but it should not extend to the rest of your body. The rest of the body should be loose and relaxed. We have seen how to do one direction of the practice, now we will see all the four directions. Please observe. Starting position. Hands just in front of your shoulders. Eyes closed. The first direction is sideways. As you exhale, extend your arms sideways with outward rotation of the wrists. As you inhale, Bring the arms back with inward rotation of the wrists. Notice how the arms are always moving just in line with the shoulders. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. The second direction is forward. As you exhale, extend your arms forward. The wrists should rotate with outward movement. Once your arms are fully extended, as you inhale, bring the arms backward. Now your wrists should rotate with inward movement. Ensure you're creating as much tension as you can. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. The third direction is upward. As you exhale, extend your arms upward. Your wrists should rotate with outward movement. Again, as you inhale, bring your arms down. Now your wrists should rotate with inward movement. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. The fourth direction is downward. As you exhale, extend your arms downward. Your wrists should rotate with outward movement. As you inhale, bring your arms up. Now your wrists should rotate with inward movement. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. Now we will do three cycles together in all the four directions. Please stand. Starting position. Feet comfortably apart. Check that they are parallel to each other. Hands just in front of your shoulders. Ensure your head is straight. Eyes closed. The first direction is sideways. As you exhale, extend your arms sideways with outward rotation of the wrists. As you inhale, bring the arms back with inward rotation of the wrists. Second cycle. As you exhale, extend the arms. Ensure your arms are moving just in line with your shoulders. As you inhale, bring them back.
third cycle. It is a full exhalation as you extend the arms. And a full inhalation as you bring them back. Once you return to the starting position, switch directions. The second direction is forward. As you exhale, extend your arms forward. The wrists should rotate with outward movement. Once they are fully extended, as you inhale, bring your arms backward. Now your wrists should rotate with inward movement. Second cycle. Ensure you are creating as much tension as you can. Third cycle. The hands should open and close as you rotate the wrist. When they open, all the five fingers should spread apart. The third direction is upward. As you exhale, extend your arms upward. Your wrists should rotate with outward movement. Again, as you inhale, bring your arms down. Now your wrists should rotate with inward movement. Second cycle. The hands should move just in line with your shoulders. Third cycle. Don't do it fast. Do it slowly with the tension. The fourth direction is downward. As you exhale, extend your arms downward. Your wrists should rotate with outward movement. As you inhale, bring your arms up. Now your wrists should rotate with inward movement. Second cycle. Ensure you are not holding your breath. Third cycle. The arm should move just in line with your shoulders, just beside the body. When you are finished, you can relax your arms and sit comfortably. Yoga for success, the neck practices. Both the neurological and the energy systems branch out in a big way between the shoulder blades and above. So keeping the neck region in a good condition is very important. Within three to four minutes of doing these neck practices, you will distinctly see that you are much more alert and the lethargy in the body will be obliterated. There is a higher level of neuronal regeneration. Memory and intellectual sharpness also improves.
Now we will do a certain set of practices for the neck. This will help you to relax the stiffened muscles in the neck and shoulder region. We will look at the first three neck practices now. Please observe. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Keep your arms and shoulders loose and relaxed. Make sure your neck is loose like a rope, no stiffness of any sort. Eyes closed. As you exhale, slowly and gently lower your chin to your chest. This is the starting position. Now, as you inhale, gently bring your head up and take it back. As you exhale, bring your head down to your chest. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. Now we will see the second neck practice. As you inhale, slowly and gently turn your head to the right to the extreme point that you can turn. As you exhale, bring it back to the center. Now, as you inhale, slowly and gently turn your head to the left to the extreme point that you can turn. As you exhale, bring it back to the center. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. And now we will see the third neck practice. As you exhale, slowly and gently bring your right ear towards your right shoulder to the extreme point you can go. As you inhale, bring it up. As you exhale, slowly and gently bring your left ear towards your left shoulder to the extreme point you can go. As you inhale, bring it up. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. Now we will do three cycles of the first three neck practices together. Please stand. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Keep your arms and shoulders loose and relaxed. Eyes closed. As you exhale, slowly and gently lower your chin to your chest. This is the starting position. Now as you inhale, gently bring your head up and take it back. As you exhale, bring your head down to your chest. Second cycle. Again, as you inhale, bring your head up and back. As you exhale, bring it down. Third cycle. Ensure your shoulders are relaxed. No stiffness of any sort. Now for the second neck practice. Come to the starting position. Your head should be straight, eyes closed. As you inhale, slowly and gently turn your head to the right. As you exhale, bring it back to the center. Now as you inhale, slowly and gently turn your head to the left. As you exhale, bring it back to the center. Second cycle, right side. Left side. Third cycle. Do it slowly, 
You can even hold the stretch for a moment and then come back. Come back to the starting position. Now we will do the third neck practice. Again, your head is straight, eyes closed. As you exhale, slowly and gently bring your right ear towards your right shoulder. As you inhale, bring it up. As you exhale, Slowly and gently, bring your left ear towards your left shoulder. As you inhale, bring it back up. Second cycle. Third cycle. It is an exhalation as you lower the head. It is an inhalation as you bring it up. When you are finished, please sit comfortably. Now we will learn the fourth and fifth neck practices. Again, feet are comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Eyes closed. As you exhale, lower your chin to your chest. This is the starting position. As you inhale, slowly and gently rotate your head towards your right shoulder. As you inhale, your head goes back. As you exhale, it comes down again. Then switch and rotate in the opposite direction. This is one cycle. You would do this three times. And for the fifth and final neck practice, rotate your shoulders forward. As you inhale, go up. As you exhale, come down. Do this three times. Now rotate your shoulders backward. As you inhale, go up. As you exhale, come down. Do this three times. Now we will do the fourth and fifth neck practices together. Please stand. Check to see your feet are parallel to each other. Eyes closed. As you exhale, lower your chin to your chest. This is the starting position. As you inhale, slowly and gently rotate your head towards your right shoulder. As you inhale, your head goes back. As you exhale, it comes down again. Do a full rotation, then switch and rotate in the opposite direction. We will do two more cycles. Second cycle. Rotate towards the right shoulder. Ensure your upper body remains still as you rotate the head. Switch directions and rotate towards your left shoulder.
Third cycle. Do it slowly with the breathing. And now we will do the fifth neck practice together. Your head is straight, upper body relaxed, eyes closed. Now rotate your shoulders forward. As you inhale, go up. As you exhale, come down. Do this three times. Now rotate your shoulders backward. As you inhale, go up. As you exhale, come down. Do this three times. When you're finished, please sit comfortably. Yoga for well-being, Yoga Namaskar. Yoga Namaskar is a powerful system by itself. It activates the lumbar region of the spine in a tremendous way, strengthens the muscles along the spine, giving it a reinforcement so that as one ages, the collapsing of the spine which causes pinching of the nerves does not happen. And if already there's damage is setting in, the best way to regenerate your spine would be by doing Yoga Namaskar. It has all-round benefits for the entire body. Yoga Namaskar is a very simple and complete process by itself. To practice Yoga Namaskar, you will need a light stomach condition. That is approximately one and a half hours gap after having a meal. If you do not fulfill this condition, please skip this particular practice for now. Those with hernia and pregnant women in the third and fourth month of pregnancy should avoid practicing Yoga Namaskar. From the fifth month onward, pregnant women can continue practicing as long as they are comfortable. Now we will learn Yoga Namaskar. This is a series of seven steps. You will demonstrate one full cycle. Please observe. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Keep your arms and shoulders loose and relaxed. Eyes open, focus on a point in front of you. Once your focus is steady, hold Namaskar by bringing your palms together in front of your chest. This is the starting position. As you inhale, bring your hands up above your head. As you exhale, bring your hands downward so that the heels of your palms come behind your neck. As you inhale, bring your hands straight up. As you exhale, bring your hands down in front of your chest. This is step one. You do the same thing twice more. Step two. As you exhale, make a sound from the pit of the throat. Step 3. The whole time, your fingers should be together, pointing straight up, even when you bring your hands behind your neck. As you bring your hands up, it is a full inhalation. As you lower it down, it is a full exhalation with the sound. After you do this three times, you squat straight down. Step 4. 
as you inhale, bring your hands up. As you exhale, bring it down behind the neck. As you inhale, bring it up. As you exhale, bring it down in front of your chest. Then, as you inhale, push your hands straight out in front of you, fingers pointing forward. As you exhale, making the sound, bring it back to the chest. Do this three times. Step five. As you inhale, bring your hands up. As you exhale, bring them down behind the neck. As you inhale, bring your hands up. As you exhale, down in front of your chest. As you inhale, straight out in front of you. As you exhale, back to the chest. Once more, step six, inhale, hands up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, hands straight out. Exhale, hands to the chest. Now step seven. As you inhale, push your hands straight out. Bring your knees to the ground. Lean forward and place your forehead on the ground. Stretch your arms above your head. Rest your palms on the ground. Place your hands together so that the thumbs and pointing fingers are touching, forming a triangle. Your elbows should be slightly bent. This is Balasana. Stay here until your breath stabilizes, or for a minimum of two minutes. Then gently stand up and come back to the starting position. This is one cycle of Yoga Namaskar. Now we will do one cycle of Yoga Namaskar together. Please stand. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Eyes open. Focus on a point in front of you. Once your focus is steady, hold Namaskar in front of your chest. This is the starting position. Step 1. As you inhale, bring your hands up. As you exhale, with the sound, bring your hands down behind your head. As you inhale, bring them up. As you exhale, bring them down to your chest. Do this twice more. Step two, bring your hands up with a full inhalation. Bring your hands down with a full exhalation. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Step three, inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down behind the head. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Now squat straight down. Ensure your focus is directly in front of you. Step four. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Then as you inhale, push your hands straight out. As you exhale, bring your hands towards your chest. We'll do this twice more. Step five, inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Keep your head straight. 
Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale straight out. Exhale back. Step six. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Inhale, straight out. Exhale, back. Step 7. As you inhale, push your hands straight out. Bring your knees to the ground. Lean forward and place your forehead on the ground. Stretch your toes behind you. The body should be sitting upon your heels. Place the hands together on the ground so that the thumbs and pointing fingers are touching, forming a triangle. Your elbows should be slightly bent. Stay here in Balasana until your breath stabilizes. Then gently stand up and come back to the starting position. When you are finished, you can sit comfortably. We will look at a few modifications and corrections. If you find it difficult to squat, then you can place a support about half an inch or one inch thick below your heels and squat down, ensuring your feet are parallel to each other. For some people, while bringing the hands behind the head, the fingers are pointing backward. The fingers should be pointing straight up. Also, there is a tendency for the head to come down. The head should be straight. Do not move the hands too quickly or casually. There should be slight tension in the arms as you do the movement. Now we will do one cycle of Yoga Namaskar together, incorporating all of these corrections. Please stand. Stand with your feet comfortably apart and parallel to each other. Those of you who need a cushion as support to squat, you can keep it just behind your feet. And when we come to step four to squat down, you can step backward onto the cushion and use it as a support when you squat down. Eyes open. Focus on a point in front of you. Once your focus is steady, hold Namaskar in front of your chest. This is the starting position. Step 1. As you inhale, bring your hands up. As you exhale, with the sound, bring your hands down behind your head. As you inhale, bring them up. As you exhale, bring them down to your chest. Do this twice more. Step two, bring your hands up with a full inhalation. Bring your hands down with a full exhalation. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Step 3. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down behind the head. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Now squat straight down. If you need a cushion, you can use it as a support. Ensure your focus is directly in front of you. Step 4. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. 
Then as you inhale, push your hands straight out. As you exhale, bring your hands towards your chest. We'll do this twice more. Step five, inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Keep your head straight. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, straight out. Exhale, back. Step six. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down to the chest. Inhale, straight out. Exhale, back. Step seven. As you inhale, push your hands straight out. Bring your knees to the ground. Lean forward and place your forehead on the ground. Stretch your toes behind you. The body should be sitting upon your heels. Place the hands together on the ground so that the thumbs and pointing fingers are touching, forming a triangle. Your elbows should be slightly bent. Stay here in Balasana until your breath stabilizes. Then gently stand up and come back to the starting position. When you are finished, you can sit comfortably. When you practice yoga namaskar on your own, on a regular basis, for maximum impact, you should do three cycles of yoga namaskar. Yoga for peace, Nadi Shuddhi. The word Nadi Shuddhi literally means cleansing the Nadis. When we say Nadis, we are not talking about the seventy-two thousand because these seventy-two thousand are only a branch out of the two basic nadis, the Pingala and the Ida. Thirty-six thousand branching out from Pingala, thirty-six thousand branching out from Ida. This is the energy physiology of a human being. When we say Nadi Shuddhi, we are talking about cleansing fundamentally the Pingala and Ida so that energy system will work in balance. There is a connection between your breath and your mental structure. To bring balance to your thought is a very important step that you need to take if you want to bring balance to your activity, your emotion and the results of your life and the impact that you have on other people's lives. Nadi Shuddhi plays an important role. How to do Nadi Shuddhi? She will demonstrate Please observe. Sit in a cross-legged posture with your spine comfortably erect, eyes closed. Left hand should be loosely placed in the middle of your lap, palm facing upwards. Use only your right hand. Use your thumb and ring finger. Fold your middle and index fingers. The ring and little finger are held straight and side by side touching. Now block your right nostril with your thumb and inhale through your left nostril. After the inhalation is complete, exhale through the same. In a similar fashion, using the ring finger, block your left nostril and inhale through the right nostril. Then exhale through the same. Again, block the right and open the left Inhale and exhale. Continue like this. Be focused on your breath. So when you do this Nadi Shuddhi, what is most important is to breathe fully in and fully out, as slowly and as gently as it is possible for you. You should not make any sound when you exhale or inhale. So for this to happen, you just need to remember one basic point, 
so that Nadi Shuddhi happens by itself. You will always switch after every exhalation. So that means, whichever nostril you inhale through, the same nostril you exhale through. You do Nadi Shuddhi for a minimum of four minutes. A few corrections for the practice. Do not keep your left hand on the thigh. The left hand should be loosely placed in the middle of your lap. To clarify, on the right hand, you use only your thumb and ring finger. The ring and little finger are held straight and are side by side touching. Fold your middle and index fingers. If you are unable to hold them straight, do it as best you can. Also, there is a tendency to keep the head down or turn to one side. Unconsciously, your face may tilt one way or the other. Your head should be straight. If you maintain this, your system will come to a balance very quickly. Ensure not to press too hard on the lower part of the nostril. Locate the septal bone on your right nostril, just a millimeter beneath that if you place the thumb. With very minimal pressure, you can block the nostril effectively so that no air can escape. Ensure you are not breathing shallow, doing normal breathing, or holding the breath. The breathing should be fully in and fully out. We will do Nadi Shuddhi together now. Sit in a cross-legged posture with your spine comfortably erect. If you are unable to sit on the floor, you can sit in a chair with your legs crossed at the ankles. Left hand should be loosely placed in the middle of your lap, palm facing upward. Use only your right hand. Use your thumb and ring finger. Fold your middle and index fingers. The ring and little finger are held straight and are side by side touching. Close your eyes. Now block your right nostril with your thumb and inhale through your left nostril. After the inhalation is complete, exhale through the same. Now using the ring finger, block your left nostril and inhale through the right nostril. Then exhale through the same. Again block the right and open the left, inhale and exhale. Continue to do this until we ask you to stop. Be focused on your breath. The breathing is fully in and fully out. Do it as slowly and gently as you can. Make sure your spine is comfortably erect. Ensure your head is straight. Continue to be focused on your breath.
You can end with an exhalation through your left nostril and stop. Please slowly open your eyes. Yoga for joy, Nada Yoga. Modern science is proving to you the whole existence is just a reverberation. Where there is a reverberation, there is bound to be a sound. So the whole existence is sound. The root sounds for this complex amalgamation of sounds are a, u and m. Without employing your tongue, you would be able to make only these three sounds, a, u and m. By placing your tongue in different positions within the cavity of your mouth, you get to mix these three sounds and produce all the other sounds. A, Vu and M are the basis of all the other sounds that you can utter. They are referred to as the basic sounds or the universal sounds. If you utter these three sounds together, you get the sound Aum. These are the only three sounds that the system can produce naturally. If you utter these three sounds carefully, different aspects of your body are activated and energized. You will notice if you utter the sound a, uh, the reverberation starts just beneath the navel and will spread right across the body because this is the only place where all the seventy-two thousand nadis or pathways of energy meet and redistribute themselves. This is the maintenance center in the body. Uttering the sound a uh, strengthens this. If you utter the sound oo, you will notice this point where the rib cage meets, just beneath that, there is a soft spot. The reverberations will flow from here and then move upward. If you utter the sound mm, you will see the reverberations will start from the pit of your throat and generally spread to the upper regions of your body. Uttering these three sounds has innumerable benefits. If you are suffering from any psychological disturbances like excessive fear, nightmares or unstable mind or body. If your general constitution is weak, you tend to fall sick too often, particularly for children who have attention disorders, daily utterance of these sounds for a few minutes a day will make an enormous difference. Uttering of these three fundamental sounds activates the three lobes of your lungs separately, which in turn activates the three basic segments of the body, the lower, the middle and the upper, laying the necessary foundation for the pleasantness of your being or for a joyful existence. Sit in a cross-legged posture, place your palms facing upward upon your thighs. Listen to the instructions carefully before you start the practice. Open your mouth wide enough and utter the sound completely exhaling into the sound. We'll do this seven times. Then shape your lips in the form of a circle and utter the sound completely exhaling into the sound. We'll do this seven times. Then, by closing your mouth, utter the sound You utter the sound mm seven times. As you do this, notice where the reverberations are happening in which region of the body. Sound A uh, generates reverberations around your navel. Sound U at the point where the rib cage meets and sound M mm, 
will center around the pit of your throat. Now let us do it together. Keep your palms facing upward, your spine comfortably erect. Please close your eyes.
take your own time, take your own time, slowly, very slowly, open your eyes. Yoga for inner exploration, Shambhavi Mudra. In the history of humanity, many truly scintillating human beings have happened. They have shown brighter than the stars in the sky. But why is it that one seems to have come with enormous capability and why is it another has to struggle with every little aspect of life? If you consider yourself to be a mechanism, you have a body and a mind. You may have a great body and a great mind, but what you call as grace is the lubrication. Without the necessary lubrication, you get stuck at every point. Any number of people like this are there on this planet, intelligent, capable, but at every corner in their life, they get stuck because there is no lubrication. So it is important for a human being to have an element of grace in their lives. Shambhavi Mudra is a process that is like opening a window so that one becomes receptive to grace. Sit comfortably in a cross-legged posture. Keep your spine comfortably erect. We will hold yoga mudra. Make the thumb and the index finger come together at the very tips, forming a circle between them. Let the other three fingers be straight, all the four fingers together without any gap between them. Holding the mudra, facing upwards upon your thigh. Arms and shoulders should be loose and relaxed. Close your eyes and sit with a slightly upturned face. When you sit with your face slightly upturned, there is a natural focus between your eyebrows. Maintain this natural focus, do not concentrate, just maintain this natural focus between your eyebrows and sit with your face slightly upturned eyes closed. Maintain this gentle and casual focus between the eyebrows and be conscious of the natural moment of breath. Continue to sit like this for three to six minutes. Yogurto va, Bogurto va, Sangurto va, Sangavina. Yes, ye Brahmani Ramate Chitta. Yes, ye Brahmani Ramate Chitta Nandati Nandati Nandate Va Nandati Nandati Nandate Va
take your own time, take your own time, slowly, very slowly, open your eyes. Yoga for love, namaskar process. The word yoga means union, union of all polarities, of masculine and feminine, yin and yang, individual and universal, shiva shakti, right brain and left brain or whatever else you may want to call them. To achieve this blessed union, the simplest form is the yoga of namaskar. Putting the two hands together in alignment with each other at the level of your heart will bring you to a certain harmony between polarities within. That in turn brings a sense of being united with whoever or whatever the namaskar is aimed at. In placing your hands together, the dualities of your likes and dislikes, your cravings and aversions are leveled out and there is a certain oneness to the experience of who you are. For a few minutes every day, put your hands together in namaskar, look upon someone or something that means much to you, maybe the sun, the moon, the clouds, the empty sky, the trees, the rock, your husband, your wife, your child, your mother, father or a picture that matters to you. Look at that someone or something with the highest level of emotion that you can generate. In an attitude of loving attention, hold namaskar for three to five minutes, your life will be on a transformational mode.